So here we go, part four of the, is the Nikon Z6 II focus tracking so terrible? And this time I shot over 2,700 frames using my Nikon Z6 II. And I was testing strictly eye tracking with auto area AF, as you'll see in the upcoming uh, segments of this video. I started out with raw files, and I'll mention that again in the video, and uh, the buffer was simply filling because I was shooting such a long duration. I was shooting at continuous high extended. I was using just the default settings for the AF area people. So I didn't adjust anything. I was using my 70 to 200 28. This is a Z series lens. I had VR on, just standard VR. Um, that was pretty much it. Nothing special out of the ordinary, nothing trying to pad the results. I only show a segment because of each shoot because 2,700 frames plus, uh, yeah, I you wouldn't want to watch that. I wouldn't want to watch that. So I tried to keep it as uh, more direct as possible. You be the judge of this and uh, let's get started. So this time, in part four, I've taken things to a newer level for testing the eye tracking area. So you'll see that I've using AF area for people, an aperture F2.8, the camera is set to continuous high extended, and I've set up this area that my subject is going to run through. And so my first session is dealing with autofocus area for people. And there's my settings. You notice custom setting A3 is set to default and my subject is running directly at the camera. So here we go. My subject is running at the camera and the camera is using auto area AF and the lighting conditions are somewhat variable in and out of shadow. So nothing special here, but just let's watch and you'll see frame by frame and I'm literally stepping through. There's that eye focus box jumping on and she's running at the camera. And so all we're going to do in this case is just track uh, a straight on straight on shot shooting at extended high and I just decided to zoom in here a little bit for you so you can see there's at 100% we'll go back to full image and you'll see processing periodically just due to the cycling of the JPEGs so these are all JPEGs straight out of camera again look at that the eye is nice and sharp as she's tracking and we're shooting at about 12 frames a second it's not playing back at that rate of course but here we go and you see the box is tracking her eye. And again, some might say, well, this is no big deal because your eyes are lit. There's more to come, you'll see. So here she's getting closer. And this is the 70 to 200 28 at F28. And I'm shooting at 1 2,000th of a second. I've got VR on because I'm hand holding. So here we go, she's coming closer, straight at camera. And you notice that eye is staying locked, which is great kind of going into shadow, eye is locked. Again, like I say, this is nothing too amazing. The camera should be able to do this. Doesn't seem to have a problem. Here we go. I'll do a 100%, just pan over a little bit. Nice and sharp. There we go. We'll just finish off this sequence. See how we're doing there. Again, 100%. So it looks like it lost her here. She's in really close. She's going out of frame, as you can see. Uh, there, she's kind of gone at this point. It's looking for her. And it can't find her anymore, of course, because she's right out of frame. And I just finished this off here. So now we'll go into this next one. This is eye tracking auto area for people again. But this time, and you'll see a little change. The subject's zigzagging toward the camera and you're gonna get full view images and 100% views. So here we go. So this is, you'll see she's, she's running between those uh, pylons back and forth zigzagging. She is looking at the camera. Don't worry, we're gonna put some, some things in the next sequence up that block her eyes. But just watch how the camera tracks. Here she goes. And the lighting is variable as you can see. Here we go. Now we'll see, is she sharp? Seems to be pretty sharp. Yeah, looks not bad. Just pan down a bit here so we can get a better view. 
And uh, this is again F28. Oh, it switched eyes. Now that was interesting. It did this automatically. That's not me. I'm leaving this in auto. Now it seems to have lost at this point. Again, she's really close. So it's struggling a little bit. And then boom, it went to that large face view. That's actually what the manual says. When things get too close, it'll lose the eye tracking on sort of it's too close for it. This time we're doing that zigzag again, but the subject is going to get blocked by branches. So you're going to actually see some branches cover her eye. So here she goes. Now she's running not at the camera. She's running in a zigzag pattern and she's not even looking at the camera this time. So that was just to make things a little harder. I'm just upping the game each time. There's that processing. Good old uh, NX Studio. Not quite the fastest for processing sometimes. There we go. So that seems to have lost her. She's blocked. We'll see in the 100% views exactly how this is reacting. But you notice the box is tracking her eyes quite effectively. It switched eyes for some reason. It's just done that. Lots of things in the foreground. It's working hard to get those eyes though. So there we go again. Let's grab the eye. And we're going to break this down once we get to the 100% views. By the way, that's a Melanois. He's not impressed what he just saw. Here we go. Now, there's the 100% view of this. And there's the eye. Now, you can see it's right on her eye. And it's got it's nice and sharp. I'll just pan this over a bit. Here we go. There we go. And uh, poor Amazon delivery guy. Hate to think what he's going to be like after. Here's the eye. Now, look at this. It went to face view. It's gone to the eye. But her eye is closed. Got some stuff in the foreground. Well, it picked her back up again. It lost her for a split second. It picked her back up. Still got that eye. Now there's those branches again. And it's working for the eye. It grabbed it again. There you go. Her eyes are closed. Again, there's the eye. And it switched eyes. Now remember, this is 100% of the image. And then the tree branches are interfering, but it's working for the eye. Two frames out, three frames out. Oh, it got her again. So that, I can't complain about that. You know, would I like 100%? Of course, but it's not 100%. It's okay. I don't think I could have done that with other systems quite so easily. Maybe somebody would get 100% with some other system. I don't know. But to say that the uh, Nikon eye detect focus stinks or it doesn't work, I don't know. Here we go again. This time we're going to do, uh, again, not only blocking, we're changing the camera's orientation to vertical. And the subject's going to go and get blocked by some branches again and run out of frame. So here we go. Let's do this again. So we're going to get full views right now. Again, branches. See that box? It's on our eye. It's working hard. And I'm, again, shooting 12 frames a second. I'm getting that slideshow viewfinder thing. So I'm having to estimate where she's going to be in frame. It jumps to her face, back to the eye. It loses her because she's gone right out of frame. And I'm doing that intentionally. I want to see what it's going to do, how easily it will pick up her face again. Just kind of jumping through these. There we go. There's her body. It's looking for her. It's trying to find her. Does it get her? I don't know. How focused is she? You're going to see that in the 100% views. Here we go. It's back. It's got nothing. It's got nothing. Must be. A oh, wait a minute. Got the eye again. Must have a lot of out of, fo out of focus images, you think? Let's see. So she's right out. It's looking. It's looking. It's searching again. It's searching. We start over. Here we go again. Now this time, there's those same frames that we just saw, but at 100%. Here we go. Notice it's locking onto her eye and keeping it. There's those branches. Still got those branches. This is camera in uh, portrait format, you could say, or portrait layout if you want. Whatever you want to say, I'm shooting vertical. There we go. There it is again. It's keeping up with those eyes, even with the branches in front. And this is just the custom setting A3 set to default. So I could tweak this maybe to fine tune it a bit better. If I was, you know, if I want to be picky, I might find plus or minus a little bit might help. 
it's keeping on her eye and uh, her eye is sharp by the way you may not see that quite through video and YouTube but those eyes are sharp I can tell you that from 100% on my screen and if I zoom in on my monitor here we go it's gone she's getting out of frame now her eyes are closed it went to face detect very interesting how it did that let's see again got to pan over a lot because she's moving there's the eye again it's grabbing that and she's not looking at us and remember we had had her blocked by the tree branches and I'm shooting vertical so does the camera work she's kind of out of frame now so it's lost her eye it's grabbed onto her hair you can see there it is there's her hair gonna pan over still on her hair here it is it's looking for her face it's sharp Let's see again yeah grab the motion of her hair so it's doing its best to try and find where'd she go it's like what's going on there was somebody here but they left let's go back out to a full view you can see she's right out of frame I did that intentionally want to see what this thing's going to do so you can see there's that sequence we're looking at jump back in here and uh, we'll go back to full image view and cycle through so it's looking for her, looking for her looking it's not sure where she is it's trying to find a face but you know it's crazy her face is still sharp and it's got no boxes so I'm not sure if those little boxes are always absolutely an indicator of what's going on let's take a look how is she it's on her neck must be the same plane of focus uh, pretty sharp let's just go do some more a little bit more those eyes look pretty sharp and we'll go more and oh, look at those eyelashes they need some uh, fixing oh the eyes are sharp there we go again this isn't for composition this is strictly just to see what will it do when it loses track of its subject does it just go nuts and look for the background and it didn't it's stuck look at that look at that it didn't jump to the background so let's do this again now this time she's going to come at us but she's going to spin so uh, again custom a3 set to default I haven't done any tweaking so she'll come at us full well she'll spin and then we'll do some 100 percent here we go so she's walking she starts spinning randomly right this is just you know to what happens when our eye detect loses the eyes well it jumps to face detect but there's no face so it's searching it's trying to find her it does well there it got her just like that now of course you could say well it's a predictable motion or you know there's a million excuses people make because they want to talk bad about the Nikon autofocus system I'm not struggling with it folks I find that the more I use it the better I know it the more I understand what works and what conditions it'll work under and then I make some choices is it a hundred percent automatic no uh, it's not a Z9 or a Z9 but I don't really care maybe people care too much about having the easy button so to speak all I can say is I'm not dissatisfied with what I'm getting again I'm shooting raw or I should say JPEG in this case just to make sure I'm getting at least 12 frames per second so she's coming at us you can see the lighting condition even her wardrobe is pretty much you know you could say falling in the tonal range of her skin and her hair so that you know I'm giving the camera a little bit more to figure out to work on but it's finding her eyes there it is there's a hundred percent and she's spinning so what happens when she spins what does it do see she's sharp it's tracking eye last chance at the eye it's looking still hasn't jumped into the background and it's looking it's still trying to figure out where did the eye go then it jumps to face it's looking for the face where'd her face go you know it's you can sort of see the fallback where this goes eye back to face and then probably back to torso it's still looking it's got that idea that this must be that person 
And uh, so here she comes around, still not enough face to understand. And then boom, it's got her face. And it's gonna jump to the eye, just like that. That's pretty cool. So we're looking at things at 100% in that spin. It's the same, you know, we're just following along here as it goes. We're gonna do this a little bit more just so we get a really good idea. What does this do? How does it work? So gone back out to a full view. She's gonna get closer now as she comes forward. So this is just, you know, I shot this in sequence. I'm playing it back for you frame by frame and I'm zooming in and out periodically at 100%. Here we go again. We're going into that spin. There's at 100% as she turns. What's happening? Face detect jumps in. Still on face, understands it's looking at a human face. Still trying to find that human face. Looking, looking, looking. Starts moving around. So again, this is all auto AF set to people. It's looking around. And this is frame by frame at, I would say about 12 frames a second. I tried it in RAW, but I would overload the buffer because I was shooting too many in a burst. So JPEG is the order of the day today. There's her face being picked up there. Jump to I right away. And it's sticking. So I don't know. There's new firmware for the Z6 and the Z7 and the Z5 that's brought it up to speed. Maybe as fast as the Z62s and Z72s. If you guys haven't updated your firmware that just came out, please do. I think you're going to see a big improvement. And for right now, the Z62, mine is working really well. That again, 70 to 200, 2.8, F2.8, two thousandth of a second. It's just tracking. It's just locking onto the eyes. And she's spinning. And she's not spinning, you know, really slow. She's spinning enough that she was dizzy afterward. There we go. Sharp. And she's in close. You can see it 100%. There we go. That's where she is. So that's, you know, we're, we're shooting and getting these results. There's the, the face tracking kicking in. It's looking around, looking around. And there's a split second for this to render sometimes. That's not because it's out of focus. It's just uh, the JPEGs in NX Studio. There she is. The eye gets locked on. There's the eye. We'll just pan up for this. There we go. Spinning around. And around and there's there's leaves moving around it's kind of windy believe it or not so she's in and out of shadow thought this was kind of a fairer test than just perfect lighting conditions yeah look at that eh? so what do you think folks does it work is it so terrible like some people say on the internet I don't know if you're having trouble look I understand you're having trouble it's frustrating but I'm telling you, it works. I think this is a good example of that the eye detect works. The face tracking works. You saw my dog getting tracked. There we go. It switched eyes. Is the one I went out of frame. It's working. She's getting awful close and she's going out of frame. And there she's leaving. And yeah, of course, I detect. And then it still looks. It's saying, I know there was a face. I back it up just so you can see this here. Look at this. Let's pan over. How is her eye for her sharpness? Not bad. I'd say that's maybe a little soft. I back up another frame. That's pretty sharp. You know, that's pretty sharp. Again, her eyes are sharp. You know, someone will say, oh, it's eyelash focus. Is it? Really? If you know anything about depth of field, even at F2.8, at 200, depth of field is more than like two millimeters or half an inch or whatever. It's deeper than that at this distance. So I think uh, that, that doesn't really hold a lot of value to me. It's doing what it's supposed to. I'm quite satisfied with what I'm seeing. Again, this is not super scientific, but I think it well illustrates the capability of the camera.